Happy guinea pig! Simply Jan Homestead YouTube channel signature dish. Hi, I'm Molly. Welcome to my kitchen. And I am doing another signature dish. This is the signature dish for April. And I am doing this for Simply Jan Homestead. Gonna be in cursive or calligraphy? Well, I can't write calligraphy, so I have to be in cursive. Okay, uh, what I am making is a dish that I am calling Simply Fish and Fixings. So, uh, before I get into what the dish entails, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Jan, of what I have learned about her from her videos and uh, listening to her and seeing her on lives and things like that. Okay, Jan is married to Kevin. I think uh, nicknamed the boss. I've, I've heard a lot of people refer to Kevin as the boss. As what? The boss. Oh. And uh, both Kevin and Jan love to fish. And that that is something that I got from several different videos that I watch. And they talk about the fishing. And Jan loves to garden and homestead. And she loves to experiment in her cooking. I had to laugh at her uh, in one of her videos. She said she loves to experiment, but Kevin's not about the experimentation. He just likes to eat. He, he, he likes it, you know, keep it keep it simple, keep it to the recipe, but she likes to experiment. Yeah. So Jan and I have that in common. We both like to experiment. Okay. Uh, they are from Texas, but they have moved to Missouri. That is where their dream home is. Uh, they own a farm there now. So, uh, that, I mean, that to me, it would be right the opposite. I would have been in Missouri and probably moved to Texas, but they lived in Texas and moved to Missouri. And more power to them on that. Somebody's got to live there. Somebody got to do it. Okay, it says their dream was to move to Missouri on a small farm. They trust in God's plan to, to do things for them, and God has worked that plan for them. Uh, they want chickens, pigs, a pond with fish in it, and a garden. And I can tell you, I, I, I can support that dream right there, and I think they've worked toward that, and they've got them a pond now, with hopefully with fish in it. And I, like I said, I know Jan Gardens. Um, software, Jan had de defined herself. Now, yes, I do have this all written down in notes, so I don't forget she defines herself as God's daughter, wife, mother, grandmother, friend, and helper. And, and that's a good way to define yourself right there. It really is. Yeah, I'm just re reading over my notes to see what I can... Uh, they have two dogs, Zena and Lily. Zena! Princess uh, Warrior! Jan <laughs> uh, has a nickname called the Reckless Gardener. I don't know... Unless it's just because I've heard her talk about she'll just spread the seeds and stuff and let them grow and go from there. Doing it gunny apple seed style. That's it. Um, they love to fish, camp, uh, to camp, and to be out in the outdoors. And a lot of that goes together with fishing and camping and stuff. So, yes, you like being in the outdoors. So, uh, that, that's a little bit about Jan. And, y'all, if y'all have not checked out... Uh, Simply Jan Homestead, I suggest that you do. Jan's a great lady. She, she is. Um, you can learn things from her. She has some great lives. You know, I, I don't always talk in the lives when I go in. Sometimes I just sit and listen. She's a lurker. I'm a lurker. So I, I try to, uh, to learn what I can, where I can, how I can. That's usually because you're editing and doing other things at the same time. Right. Piggy knows me. He knows I'm sitting there with my headphones on listening while I'm doing other things, whether it's working on recipes, working on videos, uh, you know, just trying to not bother him with what he's doing. Which is usually not a lot of nothing. <laughs> but, but that's, you know, what I've learned about, some of the things I've learned about Simply Jan. And like I said, please check out the channel. Now again, the name of this is going to be Simply Fish and Fixins. And... What we're fixing is uh, I'm going to be doing some black pepper fish, and I'm just basically calling it fish, but it is going to be a black uh, a type of black pepper fish. 
Keep it simple. I'm also doing coleslaw, hush puppies, and fries. But my fries are, are, are vinegar fries. Now, I'm going to let Piggy show you right here. I'll start with the fries. Here I have two potatoes cut. And I do have the skin on because these are the uh, Yukon Golds that have the very thin skin. So I just left them on. If you're using any other kind of potato with a thicker skin, go ahead and peel them before you cut them. And these are being uh, are sitting in one cup of white vinegar and a half a cup of water. And I'm going to use some salt to season these with when they come out of the air fryer because I will be air frying these instead of frying them. Yeah. So these are going to be vinegar fries. So you're going to need that little thing I just put it. Yeah, here in about 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes. Well, I'll go ahead and pull that. Um, then we'll start over here with the coleslaw ingredients. Um, you can make as much coleslaw as you want. I'm using um, about a third of a bag. I have a large bag of coleslaw mixture. I could not find a cabbage head. I don't know why. Most places, every time I go somewhere, I'll find cabbage heads and no coleslaw mix. This time I found coleslaw mix, no cabbage head. Never failed. It, it was either do that or go to a more expensive store and buy a head of cabbage. It would have cost twice what that did. Yeah. And so uh, I'm just using about a third of, a cab of the bag of cabbage or saw mix. I'm using one third cup of mayonnaise, salt and pepper to taste. I have here a teaspoon of vinegar, which this is white vinegar. You can use AC vinegar, uh, which is the apple cider, or you can use uh, the rice vinegar, whatever you want to use. And I have a half a teaspoon of sugar. Okay. That is for my coleslaw. And just a little bit different than what I normally make my coleslaw, but it's roughly the same. Over here, I have my hush puppy ingredients. I have one and a half cups of cornmeal mix. I have a tablespoon of minced onion. Here I have a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of parsley flakes. I have one egg and again I have my buttermilk over here to the side because I'm using my buttermilk for multiple things today. So I'm not pouring it up until I get ready to use it. Okay, next and last is my fish. Here I have maybe about a half, one and a half pound of fish fillet that have been cut into pieces and I'll show you about that size piece. I do not know what kind of fish this is. This was fish that was given to us. Uh, all I do know is that it is ocean fish and not pond fish. I can tell you that much. Right. It, it came from off the west coast of Florida. Right. So, you know. Same difference is still fish. Uh, I'm sorry. Fish is fish is fish is fish unless it's catfish because catfish has a really different flavor. Okay. I'm doing a marinade on my fish. And what I have here, I'm going to use a half a cup of buttermilk. I've got two, about two cloves of garlic. This was actually two teaspoons of already minced garlic. So I've got that. I have uh, a tablespoon of lemon zest and a teaspoon of black pepper. And my breading for this, I have a half a cup of cornstarch, a fourth of a cup of flour, which this is all purpose flour. And in here, I have a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a teaspoon of Piggy's The Rub. Okay. Now, these will be fried. I'll fry them in a skillet. I'm not going to use a deep fryer this time because I want to show that you don't have to have a deep fryer to cook all this stuff with. You can cook. If you have an air fryer, you can air fry your potatoes. If you don't have an air fryer and you have a deep fryer, you can deep fry your potatoes. It's entirely up to you. Uh, the only thing I'll be technically deep frying, which will be in a stir, will be my hush puppies when I get them made up and start cooking them. Those will be deep fried in, in a stir and not my deep fryer. <laughs> so, having said this and let y'all know, I'm going to have Piggy um, set these potatoes off to the side. You can just set them right over here, Piggy. So off right to the right side. Over here. All right. Okay. And next, I'm going to make up my marinade for my fish because I want my fish to marinate for about 20 minutes. And y'all, I decide I'm just going to put my marinade on top of my fish. And it calls for, I set it off to the side before I look again. I said uh, half a cup of buttermilk. Buttermilk. Yeah. Butter, butter. And the reason I didn't have this already made up, and the reason I'm not going to let it sit for longer than 20 minutes, is that buttermilk is very acidic. 
and acid will actually cook fish so I'm not going to let that sit for very long in there like I said you know half about 20 minutes or so and I've got my other phone on here once I get this going and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix everything together in my buttermilk before I put it on my fish and the reason for that we can be a little pork piggy little pork yeah we ain't got no little porks is because I want it to be mixed together well just hand me a fork we got porks but we ain't got no little porks that's fine give you that and I will mix this right here together y'all see how she gets me confused folks I asked him for a bowl while ago, and I told him I said it's on the second shelf of my desk, and he's over looking on our shelf. I heard shell. <laughs> but he's in there. I don't see it. Okay. And okay. then I heard her start saying desk several times. I'm like, you confused me. Okay. I suppose you'll need that rinsed out for the next use. Uh, I'll use that other one up there. It'll be fine. I can rinse that out. Okay. Have it fixed um, up for you. We're gonna get this right here going. Let this set within the marinade for like I said, 20 minutes. And while that's going, I'm gonna have Piggy hand me my uh, cooker. I'm at my cooker, my stove top over here. Cook top, right. whatever you want to call it. Cook top, top plate. Induction plate, whatever. Yeah, that's what the fish looks like with the buttermilk marinade. It's just going to sit in there and absorb. And I'm going to set that off to the side as well. i got to wash my hands real quick. I'm going to have Piggy pause me till I can come back. Alright, I've got my oil on, getting hot for my hush puppies. I'm going to make up my coleslaw real quick. Uh, basically, just going to put my mayonnaise in here. I want to get this done, I'll like mix up my hush puppies. Piggy, we hand me a spoon, please. Uh, one of my big spoons out of the drawer. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Actually, I'll need two. I'm sorry. Well, there's one. There's one. And I'm going to put my sugar in here. My, man, uh, excuse me, my vinegar in here. I'll go ahead and take that. Here. Give it that, give it that. And then salt and pepper. And yes, y'all, I love pepper in my coleslaw. I also like, if you're not big on carrots, uh, radishes are really good in coleslaw as well. And this right here is not going to be an extremely creamy coleslaw. Because the longer this sits, the more the creamier it will get. Okay. I'll give that back to Piggy. Piggy out. And grab a lid from the cooker. If I can find a lid, what's it? Well, for some reason now, I'm not able to find my lid. It's up to about 180. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a little bit. I have lids, I have bowls, and I can't find none to fit none, so I'm doing this. <laughs> this is what I do instead. It's called aluminum bowl. Handy dandy. You got to put that in the refrigerator for me. Okay. And now, I'm going to mix up my hush puppy. I put the dry ingredients together. That's the meal, the minced onion, the garlic powder, and the parsley flakes. I'm just going to mix that together real quick. I've got one egg and yeah I'm just going to pour my buttermilk I know I said half a cup but three-fourths cup 
for me, it's, it's whatever's going to work for me. And it'll take about a half a cup, three, four, probably three-fourths of a cup. And I do have a timer on uh, for my fish while it's marinating. And if you have to add a little bit more buttermilk than what I have listed on the or for, for the amount to be used, you know, that's fine. Sometimes you have to. It depends on the weather sometimes. Weather does have an effect. It really does. If it's really humid and wet outside, it's going to take less liquid. If it's really dry, it'll probably take a little bit more liquid. Yeah. My, my daddy talked to me. Uh, engineers that want to. Here you go, Piggy. Those are clean can be put up. Clean and put up. And this can be put in the refrigerator. They are clean. They are clean. I did okay. not use them. Well, since you washed it, I have not used it. Okay. okay. And my daddy talked to engineers that want to. He run code carbon mill. Can you put that in the refrigerator for me, please? Yeah. And, uh, he had the machine set to run good. Well, R and D decided to come out and, and uh, throw up the lips and fit because the machine wasn't set at what they had dictated it's supposed to be set at. He told them go ahead and set them there then. Make hey, sure. Well, when the carpet, the backing on the carpet started coming out really just trash. They were scratching their heads. They didn't know what to do. So they told him to fix it. He said, no, y'all said that's the way it's supposed to be. He said, but if you'll get out my way, I'll fix it. So he said everything back the way it was supposed to be. And they said, that ain't supposed to be like that. And they told him, you got to adjust it for the weather. Y'all might want to. He said, y'all y'all in there doing things under controlled conditions. It ain't controlled conditions out here. So you got to adjust it according to the weather. If you hand me another spoon, can you? It can be a small spoon, big spoon, it don't matter. So as long as it's a spoon. As long as it's a spoon. I bet I dry off one, I just wash it to you. That'll work too. It was right there. So some engineers got a lesson that day from a man who didn't uh, graduate high school. And I don't know if y'all noticed or not, but this is a different thermometer. I had to break down and get me a new thermometer. That other one didn't want to work for me, didn't want to cut on. And we're getting close to the 300 mark, y'all. Very close, very close. There we go. I tell that little story just to let y'all know, just because you ain't got to full education don't mean that you don't know what you're talking about about what you know that's it okay and you don't have to have a whole lot if you've got a cookie a small cookie scoop and you want to use that go right ahead i just don't very big uh hush puppies right. uh i'll need one of my uh spiders over a piggy one of your what the spider spoon uh, oh One of these. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, everybody thinks that piece of paper means everything. It don't. So I've seen people that ain't got no education to speak of. Out with people who had the best educations in the world. I sort of say some of the smartest people I know didn't even graduate high school. That's right. Everybody can learn. I knew a man that didn't go further than the sixth grade, but he loved to read, read or digest. And uh, 
told me a story about having made some German engineers scratch their head because he figured out something that they didn't foresee and, and uh, couldn't figure out from what they was told about it. So they had to come over here from Germany to see if they could fix the problem. Well, he had it fixed when they got here. He done figured it out and solved the problem. The problem was he couldn't claim it as his because it was on company time. Yeah. So. No. But it was kind of funny. You want to cook these till they're golden brown and done. The first ones might not turn out too great. And yes, they probably would turn out better in a deep fryer, but. You know what, just like I said, a lot of people don't have a deep fryer. They eat the same. But they eat the same. And what we're going to do is while I'm cooking these, I'm going to go ahead and take a break. And then when we come back, these be done and we should be ready to put the potatoes in the air fryer and start cooking the fish. Uh, I'm going to put okay. these... Hey, uh, uh, I'm going to put my hush puppies in there. Y'all look at this hush puppies. Don't they look pretty? Those are some really... And Piggy, does, this is Piggy's third one, y'all. We, I taste this one just to make sure it didn't need to add nothing else. And that's Piggy's third one. If that tells y'all anything. So I'm going to pop these in my oven to keep warm. I do have them on the warmer setting. Okay, I need to... Uh, I'm going to have Piggy do that for me. Piggy, will you uh, drain the potatoes, please? Rain tape. Yeah, you might need to strain it. Well, I know I'll use the strainer for a minute. I'm going to do it like that. Okay. And I've got some oil in my skillet here, y'all getting hot. I'm not putting just a touch more oil in there. I want to make sure I have plenty of oil. And I want my, I want it to be hot. Okay. I'm not going to put them on there just yet, Petey. Oh, uh, well. I'm going to cut right, and dry then. just a little bit, okay? Just to get any excess water off of them or in vinegar. I, I just don't want them super wet because I'm going to place them in here and then I'm going to spray them. Uh, we all know that you, know, you got to have a little bit of oil of some kind. What are you going to want this set on? Uh, 400, which is what it should be already be set on. It just has to be cut on. It has to be cut on. Yeah. But I don't have a very big basket to hold potatoes here. So what are you going to do, have it on air fry? Yes, it'll be put on air fry, but you put it on, I'll put it on there when I turn it, or turn it on when I put them in there. Well, I figured I'd bring them over and put them in. Yeah, I was going to let you do that. But. Oh, okay. She's going to let me, folks. And y'all, these potatoes smell good. They've they got that nice vinegary smell to them. And this right here is just the uh, experiment with the cooking part of it, Miss Jen. So I hope you like this video. Well, I would say that I'm there with your husband on the experimenting, but I figured if I'm going to be involved in her channel and her love to experiment, I might as well take one part of the team. Oh, uh, I don't know if you on there, Piggy. And, it, and it's paid off quite well. All you got to do is look at my good. Okay. Now all these taters, I'm going to have to turn some of them up on the edge like that, I guess. Make them all fit. They'll all fit. I'll get them in there. Well, how about just cook what you got? And we can cook those later. How's that? Because I don't feel like doing two batches. There's going to do one. Yeah. And what I'm going to do, Piggy, is I'm gonna, when, I, when you put these in the cooker for me, yeah. air fryer for me, I'm going to have you set me a timer over for about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yes, yeah. and we'll check them at the 15 minute mark to see how they're doing. And let me find a break. Here we go. You still got one in there. I'm blind, y'all. <laughs> I'm blind. I can see. Okay. Don't worry, folks. There's been plenty of times I've asked her where something was, or I was looking for something. She come, she come over and look, and it'd be right there in front of me. And I mean, literally, okay. in front of me. If you can uh, put that in the air fryer on. Uh, I can. Yeah, go put it in the air fryer. 
and put it on the 15. Well, I'll set a timer here for 15 pig. Don't worry about it. Okay. I don't think this one's got an actual timer. It don't. Once you get it turned on, I'll set the timer for 15. It is on. Okay. Now what I need to do is to, uh, I need to strain the uh, fish. Well, that big, I don't know if that'll work, but that big, that big, the colander, yeah, that's the one I need. While you do that, then I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to put my cornstarch. I'm over here on my tippy toes, folks. Yeah. Cornstarch flour and uh, the salt piece, uh, the rub, and the, uh, what did I say this one is y'all? My mind went totally blank. I don't know. Lemon zest. That's the marinade, okay. Cornstarch flour, salt, black pepper, and peas for rub. That's what's in there. And I need a fork, too, if you don't mind. It's going to be cheap. I don't mind. Like I said, I'm letting my oil get hot. See, folks, this, this ain't necessarily selfless help. I know I get to eat good. That's right, Piggy gets to eat good. And that's my dry mix. I'm going to have Piggy pause for just a second while I drain my fish. Okay, y'all have me our tongue. I've got my dry and I've got my fish. And what I'm going to do, I take my fork and put it down here in this dry ingredient. I'll probably try to do about four pieces at a time. Oh yeah, if y'all watch Piggy's video, y'all understand that. And that is our uh, drive to the meetup. I wonder if you pick up on that. Part two, drive to the meetup. Our biggest meetup, that is. Okay. Yep, there'll be two more parts coming out this next week, two, ten, thirty. Now I'm going to set this in the hot oil. And let it cook until it's golden on the one side, and then I'll flip it and cook it until it's golden on the other side. Okay. Now this should not take very long at all to cook this fish. Y'all hear noise in the background, just disregard it. It's just the organ grinder's monkey doing his thing. Yeah. Piggy's washing and putting up dishes for me as I go. Okay, I feel for any of you that have to do your own dishes when you get done because I know what it is. And I got my dishwasher over with Mr. P. I figured it like this. I just ain't got much up, nothing else to do. And like I said, it's not totally selfless because I know the quicker that gets done, the quicker I eat, I know the quicker the dishes get cleaned up, the quicker they'll be ready for the next time. Mm -hmm. You know, it may take two, three, four minutes per side to cook the fish, a total of about five to seven minutes, maybe. I'm going to let that go ahead and cook for another minute or so. And then, uh, Flip the fish and let it cook in, and then I'll take my rack down and put it in with my uh, hush puppies. So, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we'll take a pause until I get the fish done and the french fries are done, and then we'll be back. And please don't forget to check out Simply Jan Homestead and let Miss Jan and Mr. Kevin know that Piggy and I sent you over. Okay? We're back. Everything is done. Uh, the only thing I had to do for the potatoes when I took them out of the air fryer, which Piggy needs to cut off, by the way, uh, I salted them. Uh, so I salted with the potatoes. Fish is done. Hush puppies are done. Coleslaw is done. And back here you will see I have some tartar sauce. I made this last night. Da, 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 da. This is just because that's what I wanted. 
You can use any kind of sauce you want with this. Jan, if you like tartar sauce, you can use your favorite tartar sauce, or if you want to use cocktail sauce or ketchup or whatever, you could use whatever you want. But uh, this is Simply Fish and Fixings. Jan, I hope you like the meal. I hope you and Kevin both like the meal that I fixed for you, and I hope it actually portrays you because this is what I would fix for you if I were to fix you a meal. So, uh, I'm going to do a taste test. So I'm going to try mine without the tartar sauce, and then I'm going to try it with the tartar sauce. But before that, I'm going to try a little bit of everything just to see. So the first thing I'm actually going to try is potatoes, the vinegar fries, y'all. Fish. Pinky tried the fish. The fish is good. Slight vinegary taste. Some of them could have cooked a little bit longer with that spine. So it's in 15 minutes, probably 20 minutes in the cooker, in the air fryer. But yeah, good flavor. Well, it's hard to get good taters from the store, too, so. Yeah. Coleslaw. Oh, yeah. Good flavor on the coleslaw. Hush puppy. We already know. Mm. Let me zoom in on that. Look at that. Mm. Well, y'all, yeah, we noticed that the camera had cut off and I didn't know what I had missed. So I went back and watched my last part of it to see where it didn't get where I got to. And I missed the fish, y'all. It cut off right before I started taste testing the fish, so. That's good stuff. Or it really it. is. It really is good stuff. It didn't cast a good reaction, mm -hmm. so. There's still a good reaction, but. And I'm sorry about that, y'all. But this is what the fish looks like on the inside. I was showing y'all that. Okay. Now, I have made a tartar sauce that I made up last night. Um, Jan, you can use whatever you want on your fish. If you like tartar sauce, use tartar sauce. Um, or if you like uh, cocktail sauce, whatever, you know, use, use whatever. But um, I made this up last night, and Piggy said it needed something a little bit more twang. I said, we'll let it marinate. We'll let it marinate, and y'all, it's perfect, ma'am. It is. Mmm. That really sets that fish out. Mm -hmm. That is so good. And um, even though I didn't show making the tartar sauce, I will add the tartar sauce recipe to the cookbook with the rest of the fish and fixings. That'll work. Yeah, so that's a bonus recipe there. So uh, I just want to say, again, please check out Simply Jan Homestead. Say hi to Jan and Kevin. Let them know Piggy and Alan sent you by. We hope y'all like the video. Jan, I really hope you like the video. Uh, I thank y'all for watching. And I hope everybody has a great day. So, bye y'all. Bye y'all. We're back on.